Well, good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I hope that your families are safe and healthy. Uh, I realize it's dinner time, so I'm very appreciative of you joining this town hall uh, to hear uh, some of the great work that's happening uh, in the city of West Palm Beach and uh, the county. My name is Commissioner Corey Neary, and for the last six weeks, I have been working with our community as a part of the COVID-19 response unit focusing on housing and homelessness. Uh, first off, I think we all can agree that in this pandemic, our city's most marginalized residents are at the greatest risk of negative health and economic impacts. Our team, and I'll introduce them in a second, took a focused approach to developing strategies that could be fast-tracked and implemented quickly. Understanding that expediency is essential in the response to COVID-19. So working with me in this group is Eric Kelly, CEO of the Quantum Foundation, Clarice Redding, Director of Community Services for Vita Nova, Diana Stanley, CEO of the Lord's Place, Laurel Robinson, Executive Director of the West Palm Beach Housing Authority, Jennifer Ferriero, Director of Housing and Community Development the city of West Palm Beach, and last but certainly not least, Marcus Laws, Homeless Services Coordinator for West Palm Beach. You know, our group's mission was to identify key programs and initiatives that we could focus on and make an immediate difference in our community. Tonight, we're going to hear about several programs. They include the city's rental eviction protection program, support for reemployment application assistance, programs to support our homeless population and identify key needs where the community can help. This is our fifth town hall this week and there has been lots of information covered. All five of our city commissioners, including former Mayor Jerry Muyo, are leading COVID-19 response units. For more information on COVID-19, City, the town halls or any programs that we're talking about, please visit www.wpb.org slash COVID-19. For this evening's town hall, I'm joined by several panelists to talk about housing and homeless issues in West Palm Beach and Palm Beach County. And we're gonna hear updates from the city of West Palm Beach on current programs to help renters, city programs to help individual with, individuals with food stamps and reemployment applications, programs offered through the Lord's Place, and of course, Vita Nova will present information on their Dare to Care program and how residents, all of you, can help our community during this pandemic. We also want to hear from the public about any questions that you have, and we will take Q&A at the end of our town hall. There are three ways you can submit your questions during this meeting. Via email to townhall, one word, at wpb.org. Townhall at wpb.org. The second way is in our Facebook live stream event by posting your question in the comments section or in Zoom by typing your questions into the Q&A box and clicking send. We will be monitoring this throughout the town hall, so please send your questions at any time. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we know that uh, housing stability will be vital in the coming weeks and months, especially for our low-income renters. Thank you, Jennifer, for being here tonight. And can you provide an update uh, with couple of the city programs. I know we talked a little bit a lot about the rental eviction protection program, uh, also our reemployment assistant application program and food stamp assistant application program. So the floor is yours, Jennifer. Absolutely. Thank you, Commissioner Nearing. And I hope everyone that is on this call and on the Zoom meeting um, that this meeting finds you in good health, and not only for yourself, but for your loved ones. So just to jump quickly and to, just to kind of talk about all the things that are going on related to housing. Um, and I just want to say that this information is also provided in the city's COVID-19 toolbox, 
So be mindful of anything that you miss out in my short uh, um, uh, spiel. Just know that this information is readily available, so um, um, you'll, you'll have a, uh, the opportunity to ask additional questions. So I'm, I'm breaking out the housing perspective in two ways. One, it's from the homeowner's perspective, and two, if you're a renter, what it is that you need to do to maintain housing stability. Um, our goal as a city is to make sure that individuals are um, uh, able to, to stay in their homes. And if you're experiencing any sort of, of financial distress because of COVID, that you keep housing stability. That is the most uh, essential thing for us as it relates to housing at this moment. Um, so, of course, assistance for, assistance for homeowners. Um, first and foremost, if you in any way, shape, or form are experiencing a financial um, hardship, I think one of the things that the first thing that you can do is that you can request a forbearance with your mortgage company. And that means that your loan servicer or your mortgage company may suspend or reduce your mortgage payments for a specific period of time. So that's one consideration. The other consideration is um, there is a program that is provided by Palm Beach County, which city residents are eligible for, and that is a foreclosure prevention program that can provide up to $10,000 up to four months rent. So that um, application process is available through Palm Beach County, and you will have that information um, available online at the city's website, which we will give you that information as well at the end of this slide. Um, from a renter's assistance perspective, the city has a COVID-19 um, rental eviction prevention program. You can receive up to $3,000 up to two months rent. That application is currently available, and that is available online via the city's website or by contacting the Department of Housing and Community Development. I'll also state that the county will also have a rental assistance program that city residents are eligible to apply for, and that application process should be available in the forthcoming months. Uh, I believe um, that will also be up to four months of rental assistance. So that's in terms of what's provided for a rental or for foreclosure assistance for our city residents. Another program that we have in housing and community development is that we are able to assist city residents to apply for unemployment benefits or food stamp benefits. We understand that, you know, if you're not used to a process that, that, that's as cumbersome as applying for, um, you know, unemployment or food stamps, you may need assistance and resources to help guide you. So we do have that available. Um, we actually are doing that face-to-face -face here at City Hall by appointment only. Um, we are following all of the social distancing protocols and all of the recommendations by the CDC. So you will have, um, um, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be safe in that perspective. We are also doing that behind glass doors. So if, if, if for whatever reason you don't, you may feel like you're unsafe, we are taking those precautionary methods. How, what you can do to obtain assistance or to schedule an appointment with us is by contacting us at 561-822-1274, 822-1274. And again, this information will also be available at the end of this presentation. One final thing is um, there is an organization that is assisting um, uh, migrant workers within the city um, with rental assistance. Um, so any individual that is a migrant worker that is working within city limits can contact the Esperanza Community Center, and their telephone number um, will also be provided either in this slide or by contacting, um, at the end of this presentation, excuse me, or by contacting our office at 822-1250. Again, 822-1250. And I think that's pretty much it, Commissioner Nearing. I covered, you know, just the gist of the different programs. Again, um, this information is available to city residents in the city's website and, of course, in the COVID-19 toolbox that is currently available. And I'll send it back to you, Commissioner. Thank you, Jennifer. And I know that uh, we'll have this opportunity during uh, question and answers, but can you talk a little bit about um, we as a city, we've assigned um, you know, X amount of dollars to, to, to help with this, uh, specifically the uh, rental eviction uh, prevention program, um, there's, there's been a great need, right? And we know right. that those dollars are, are close to, if not there in terms of being accounted for or maxed out. Um, do we anticipate that there'll be uh, more dollars to help support that program since it's such a, uh, a well-needed program in the city? Absolutely. So um, we have received federal dollars from the Community Development Block Grant Program. So that's about 500,000. Um, I will say the biggest pot of funding was received by the county, Palm Beach County. They received about $260 million 
and they are allocating a large percentage to rental and foreclosure assistance. And city residents, again, they are eligible, even though the, we directly have not received that funding, our city residents are available, are eligible to apply to the county's program. So whether it's the city's program or the county's program right now, we have received an adequate amount of resources to address those needs. And um, what we're trying to do is just to make sure that we, you know, continue to, to be cautious of how we spend that money to make, because we don't know, you know, this pandemic in terms of what the needs are going to be a year from now. So we have funding allocated now and we're, we're ready to, you know, that funding is readily available to our residents. And, and right now we have enough to accommodate, you know, what the need, the current need. Great. All right. Thank you, uh, Jennifer. And I want to acknowledge you're practicing social distancing. Uh, we have Marcus Laws, uh, who, who is also Hi. there. Thank you, Marcus. I know you'll be uh, very helpful as we get towards uh, the Q&A portion. So uh, thank you. Uh, I want thank you, Commissioner. To, no problem. Uh, I, I now want to uh, turn it over to Laurel Robinson, Executive Director of the West Palm Beach Housing Authority. And, and Laurel, let me just say that uh, as, as, as a commissioner, and I think I speak for the entire dais, where, when we say thank you, uh, you and your team have done an outstanding job uh, in the city of West Palm Beach, <laughs> not just through COVID, but just in general. And I want to acknowledge you. Uh, so now the floor is yours. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. And uh, we certainly appreciate the, um, the ability to, uh, to partner with the city and the nonprofit service providers and the volunteer agencies that have helped to keep the people in housing healthy and safe. We have uh, nearly 2,000 residents uh, in the city. So uh, we work hard to make sure that they remain in that housing and there will be no evictions. We're, we're not going to be do, pursuing any evictions uh, pertaining to rent for at least until July. So those folks are gonna stay home and uh, be able to stay safe. Uh, they also will not have their water turned off. Thank you very much, city. And uh, the utilities are going to stay on. Um, and we continue to adjust the rents as they're required. So as people lose a job or, or get their hours cut back, we immediately ratchet back on the rent. So um, I think we, uh, we can stay pretty good with, with that. We've also been delivering food uh, to people in our development. And I, I, I just have to send a, a big shout out to Kimberly Mitchell. She made over 5,000 meals available for us, for our elderly, for our families, and for the kids that we've been delivering throughout this, this situation. Our risk control group, provide, uh, beside providing extra security on the properties, they also provide traffic control for the PAL distribution center, and they have personally delivered over 400 bags of the shelf-stable groceries, which we've come to learn is very important uh, to, to our families. And following our successful partnership with Quantum and Found Care, we're now partnering with the West Palm Emergency Management and Fire Departments and the County Healthcare District to bring testing directly into housing. We house the most vulnerable populations in the city, and they often lack the means and transportation to travel out to the testing sites. And there's also kind of a reluctance maybe to travel out to those sites. So we're very, very ex excited. And starting next week, we'll have the mobile centers coming directly into our communities. And I'd like to thank Chiefs Mooney and Bloomfield for their leadership in bringing this life-saving service to folks that live in housing. And I'd also like to thank you, Commissioner Nearing, for including the Housing Authority in the citywide effort. We're more than ready to do our part we're going to do housing, security, food, and tests, and we'll get through this together. Thank you again. Absolutely. Uh, thank, thank you, Laurel. Uh, but before I let you go, let me, well, not let you go, but before we move on, um, could you talk a little bit about that testing process? Because I, I think, and I really just kudos to the entire uh, city administration and, and, and our EOC staff. Uh, we saw early on that our um, that many of our communities were not getting the testing um, that, yeah. that is needed. And I know that's been a big deal for, for you, Laurel. Can you just talk a little bit about and how that's going? 
Yes, and, and I'm very grateful because we've had some very open and frank discussions. A lot of people simply don't want to pick up a telephone, make an appointment, and there's a lot of nervousness and fear. Making an appointment can be intimidating. And uh, a lot of folks feel, look, I'm in my home. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I don't want to go out there. I don't want to get in. Uh, you know, with people that might be sick. And I certainly don't want to be handing over all this information. I don't want to pay, I can't pay for it. And uh, to have the county and the emergency management folks step up so that we're, we're playing a big role too. Our housing authority staff is talking individually with everybody that lives in our units and saying, look, you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to worry. You're not going to lose housing. You can, you have people here that you can trust. So go ahead and get a test. And I'm really hoping that we can make some uh, some big strides in that regard. We already had one site we partnered with Quantum and um, Found Care and had a very successful walk up. You don't need to drive. You know, people can't sometimes. So we're going to do it with walk ups without need for a, uh, a, a formal appointment. Yes, you have to fill out information because you got to know who you are and if you test positive or negative, but we're doing it, I think, in a much more user friendly that's going to reach the folks that may have hesitated so far. Great. Thank you. And, you know, it's often been said that crises bring out uh, the best and the worst uh, in mm -hmm. us. I'd like to focus on the best. And that's what we've seen, I think, uh, in terms of a community response. So uh, it really is all of us you know, coalescing and coming together. And, and uh, it, it's been great. So thank you, Laurel. Hey. Uh, so next, I'd like to uh, introduce and have uh, Diana Stanley, CEO of the Lord's Place, uh, provide some updates. Uh, uh, Diana, I don't need to tell you uh, the jewel that you are uh, in our city and your entire team, quite frankly, um, and the work that you do uh, on behalf of not just the city of West Palm Beach, but the entire county around issues of homelessness. So uh, the floor is yours, Diana. Thank you, thank you. First of all, um, I wanna just thank you again, Commissioner Corey Nairing for your help. But you know, this has been such a great process. Um, as I give out the report on homelessness, I think it's really important that the city of West Palm Beach folks understand that this is, the, what I'm about to report only happens because we have this amazing partnership with the city, with Laurel, with Vita Nova, and that the Lord's Place is just really proud to, to be a leader in this and to help bring people together. So let me give you a quick update. First of all, we have not been closed. Laurel's Place has never closed its doors. Um, we have been wide open. We're still open for business as planned, and we've been quite busy. So here's some, some, some interesting data that I want to share with folks. Since March, our street engagement team, which is the street engagement team that works with Marcus, and he'll be reporting out later too, I hear. Um, and this team is the team that's actually going out into the community and starting to serve the most vulnerable men and women and families that are out on the streets. So that being said, and here's some great pictures we're gonna show you. We have touched the lives of 164 unduplicated individuals during the, this COVID time. 82% of those that we've been able to engage with have received services such as referrals and meeting basic needs. The picture you just saw before is our, our team at uh, Cafe Joshua. They were getting ready to, to start putting the food together so that you know each week we have been distributing close to um, about 140 packages of shelf stable food plus hygiene products plus, very important for the community to know, plus PPEs are distributed each week. Um, and that's really important. We're getting those face masks and we're getting gloves out into the homeless community to keep people safe. Simultaneously, and there's Joey, one of our, um, he's our supervisor of our street engagement. He is out serving people, handing out food, making certain that people are taken care of. We also received a generous donation uh, from GL Homes. So now we're able to put some food or some clothes out clean clothes to folks. Um, so it really is a partnership. You can see Joey here on uh, Main Street and we're uh, just making certain that people are being taken care of. Um, we have a grab and go hot lunch um, every day, Monday through Friday at Cafe Joshua on Australian from 10.30 a.m. until 1 p.m. Um, and um, they are able to come by, they're able to have a nice hot lunch, to have a little bit of engagement. And most importantly, what we're able to do is start that process of engaging them to start thinking about leaving the streets. And I think my 
greatest joy to share tonight is the fact that since um, the last three weeks, I'm proud to report that we have been able to house 10 people that were currently living on the streets in Curry Park, at Fogelman, at Phipps Park. And uh, this is because of a donation we received from a private donor, as well as some other funding that came in. So we now have 10 people that are actually living in their own home, ready to rebuild their lives. And we're really excited about that. The team that we have right now, we have four people on our street engagement team. Um, the two that you're seeing here are the ones that are literally still out on the streets with masks on and gloves still checking in with people, uh, making sure everyone's okay, doing visits, uh, honoring the social distancing. And then we have two other folks that are actually working remotely and they are on the phone talking to folks um, and making certain that the folks that are living out on the park um, are connected to daily. And so uh, we've got two on site and two um, working remotely. Somebody once asked me what it is it that we need, and I can tell you that we are gonna need more, more phones. Um, more and more folks are gonna need phones so we can stay connected. And so that's really important to share with, with the audience today. I would be remiss not to say that we are already starting to see the, the increase in phone calls. Just this week alone, we have had 200 phone calls for assistance. We know that there is going to be the moratorium on um, not being evicted, except for you, Laurel, thank you for that, but everybody else in the world is going to end on Saturday. So we are starting to prepare. What do we need to do as a community for prevention? The last thing we wanna do is make certain that anybody who is still housed today is in three months not knocking at the door at the Lord's Place or living out in Curry Park. So along with the city of West Palm Beach, the county, all of our partners, we are starting a very robust prevention program that will allow people to stay housed and we're gonna do the best that we can so that we don't have anybody else entering the homeless system. And so that's my update to you and to the gang. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. And again, just thank you for everything that you and your team uh, do for our community. It's been uh, great to work with you on this uh, COVID-19. Uh, thank you. We, we are honored to, to do. do this. Yeah, we, we, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, we did uh, pre-COVID and we're going to have a lot of work to do around the issue of homelessness post-COVID, but uh, glad to uh, be in the foxhole with you. So uh, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so um, we're gonna move on to uh, Clarice. Uh, and Clarice, listen, I, I think the work that happens at Vida Nova with uh, Jeff DeMario, who is the president and CEO there. Uh, and just, it, it's been a real uh, joy, quite frankly, to work with you on this project. Um, and I know you're gonna talk to us about it, the Dare to Care project. What's interesting about, I think, this initiative is Vida Nova was already doing this work to a certain degree. and. This was a perfect example of when we bring the community together, I mean, the literal community from folks, you know, volunteering with, with and I don't want to steal your thunder, but, you know, bringing in supplies, the Lord's Place, making sure that our homeless population have a hot meal. And then, of course, the mobile showers, which, you know, many of us, quite frankly, we take for granted. And I, you know, I don't know if it's anecdotal, but I had heard that uh, many of our Many of the folks in our homeless population have been two or three weeks since they have been able to get a hot shower prior to, you know, these types of initiatives. So can you talk to us a little bit about uh, this initiative and how it's all kind of come together? Yes, I can. Thank you for just including us tonight. And thank you for your leadership in this project, Commissioner Nearing. I know it's a big task to take on, so thank you for that. Thank you to all of the partners who come together with us in this, and to our next door neighbors, and really our sister organization, The Lord's Place. Thank you for all of your support as well. So with this project, um, once the quarantine was announced, once businesses began really kind of taking those extra precautions to make sure that they kept staff and the public safe, we didn't necessarily close either. I think in this line of work, it's impossible to close. We moved a lot of our services remote, but my team being that I run our drop-in center for homeless youth, we are boots on the ground in the community every day, working with that population between the ages of 18 to 25, which the federal government has determined it's considered youth. So not only working with those who are homeless within that age range, 
But we also noticed that there were more homeless families that were coming forward, especially as you know, jobs began to sort of shut their doors, individuals were being furloughed. I think we really started to see some of those families that were maybe just on the edge kind of being pushed over. And so the question was posed to our team was, you know, we are doing such great work in this space with youth, but is there just a possibility you could take it a step further? And I wasn't going to say no. I wasn't going to back down from that challenge. So we partnered with our friend Tim Murphy with Dare to Care Mobile Showers, just excellent organization, amazing nonprofit, and I really admire his bravery and what his team is doing. And they bring in their mobile shower trailer every Thursday. And between the hours of 10 a.m. and 1 p.m., we do a grab-and-go breakfast. We know that our next-door neighbors do a grab-and-go lunch. So we offer the hot breakfast. They do the hot lunch. We kind of tag team there. And we were putting together initially hygiene kits. Well, what we realized is that a lot of our homeless neighbors were letting us know that they were not able to wash their current clothing, they couldn't do laundry, and you're right, some of them were going two and three weeks without a shower. And for us, it's all about restoring that dignity, restoring that confidence. We want them to know that they're valuable members of our community too, and they deserve the same respect, the same opportunity. So we began putting together grab and go clothing bags. So we would have clean shirts, clean pants. We received so many donations. Thank you to our community members of brand new underwear and socks and different masks. And we are able to put those together in Ziplocs where they can come up, grab their size, go and take their shower, get their breakfast. And we can answer questions about our program and also link them to other resources in the community. A lot of them we were referring next door to the Lord's Place and then vice versa. They were sending individuals next door to us as well. Today, something new happened that we are really proud of. Um, the city of West Palm Beach was able to send over some of their EMTs and we were able to offer COVID-19 testing on site, which is wonderful. That was a huge development for us. And we have been running this mobile shower program for a little over a month now. I would say we're going into our sixth week, and we have seen the numbers increase weekly. We started out with 20 individuals, and then it grew the next week to 24, upwards of 30. Today, we actually saw 35 individuals that came for showers and an additional four that came just for the coronavirus on-site testing. So we're anticipating if this continues to grow, we're gonna be seeing maybe 40 to 50 different individuals per week, and most of these are unduplicated. And the ones that do continue to come every week, I'm noticing that they're bringing along a friend or another individual. So I'm glad to see that word is really spreading. So on top of doing this, it's just also offering that community education, um, letting them know where to go, what resources that the city has, and also a little bit more about what we do at Vita Nova for individuals between 18 to 25. So it's been really a fantastic outreach opportunity for us. I always tell people, I have the hardest working team in Palm Beach County. When I say outreach, they are not afraid to go out. And I, I love that about them. They are the bravest group of people I've ever met. And we are hoping to continue this project even after the pandemic is through. We want to keep partnering with the Lord's Place and the city and those other orgs. And we just thank the community for their support. That's great, uh, Clarice. I really, really, uh, really appreciate it. Can you talk a little bit about, um, because I know we've changed somewhat. Initially, we were asking for um, clothes as a part of the donations, but I know that that's somewhat changed. Can you talk about what the need is now currently that we can get to our homeless population as a part of uh, this initiative? Yes, I can. So originally we were asking for clothing 
and community members, thank you. You answered that call. You went above and beyond, which is great. Um, right now, the needs that we currently have are for brand new underwear and brand new socks in different sizes. And if you are able to make and create masks, that would also be wonderful. Thank you, City of West Palm Beach, for supplying us with masks and to the Lord's Place. But I noticed that that is something that we um, kind of go through rather quickly, those disposable masks. And even the cloth ones are great because they can kind of hand wash them as well. So those are our current needs. Great, great. Now, I really appreciate it. And um, I'm sure we'll have some questions during the Q&A for you. I also wanted to share, uh, we were talking about the uh, eviction and foreclosure, but the governor extended the eviction and foreclosure, foreclosure moratorium until June 2nd. That was breaking news today. Um, so it overrides the order that expires on Sunday. So a little uh, Thursday evening, good news uh, for, uh, for, the, for the group. Um, before we transition, Marcus, I just want to give you an opportunity uh, maybe take a couple minutes and uh, any updates that you have from your perspective. Well, uh, the most updates that we have, uh, we're working closely with the county uh, to start looking at how we uh, utilize our acuity list and look at our housing inventory for permanent supportive housing as well as rapid rehousing dollars to make sure that we are effective in uh, looking at our homeless population and making sure that we continue to serve them. I would uh, ask that uh, the city uh, residents recognize that we have been in an unprecedented time and that the folks living on the street have uh, been without some of the most integral services that they need mm -hmm. on a regular basis to keep them engaged. So uh, part of our process is to make sure that they're safe, uh, to keep them engaged in services and make sure that we're serving them on a regular basis. So we're going to be responding to the community as quickly as we possibly can and making sure that our homeless neighbors get the care and love and support they need. Good deal. Good deal. Thank you, Marcus. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate all the updates. I think it just speaks to the work that's happening um, and not, not just on this uh, you know, unit response group, but really across the board, all of the commissioners, including uh, former Mayor Jerry Muya. I mean, just a lot of great work that's happening. And listen, for all of us, we understand that this is um, it's uncharted territory. And ultimately, we all benefit when we prioritize the needs of our lowest income and most marginalized people in our city. I think and believe it, it will slow the trajectory and speed of the pandemic. I think it improves the health of the entire city. And, uh, and we have to ensure that we have safeguards to ensure that equitable uh, and just recovery happens. And so uh, I know that's a mouthful, but I think that's what we all want ultimately and we want to see. So I think we're going to transition, uh, if the moderator uh, is available, I think we're going to transition to and open the floor uh, for questions. So uh, moderator, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. That was such a powerful panel. Thank you for all the information. Uh, one question we received, are homeless individuals being tested for COVID-19 and how can they sign up for this if so? Diana, you want to take that? You're on mute, you're on mute. Sorry guys, I have to unmute okay. that. Um, yes, yeah, so we are working. Um, I was so glad to hear that we had our first testing at the showers this, this afternoon, so this morning, so we're all excited about that. We are continuing to work with the county um, to get more testing. I, I know Laurel would agree with me. Unfortunately, the limited tests sometimes, um, the poor and the, and the homeless are the last ones to get them. And so I, I do a shout out to Quantum, who's really been taking a lead on this and making certain that all people are tested. So we're gonna continue to um, advocate for more testing, more testing, and we're starting to see that roll out. Um, of course, our big concern, and that's the next step will be um, once we are testing and we're finding positive uh, folks, we need to figure out what the plan of action is. We're working with the public health department on that um, and making sure people are quarantined. Um, ultimately, our goal is to make certain that, um, you know, while we are all dealing with COVID and we can wash our hands and we can go home and we can do all this stuff, um, our folks living out on the streets, um, unfortunately, don't have those same kind of luxuries at this juncture. And so Marcus is right. I think this is really a time for the community to be patient and loving and to understand it's hard enough to be homeless and poor. And now it's even twice as hard 
because you don't have any of the same things that we have. So I'm really praying that that's what this community is going to do. They're going to be less judgmental and more forgiving and more supportive as we move forward, as we take care of the most vulnerable. Thank you. Our next question was on Zoom from Naya. How can other organizations or businesses partner with the city to assist with housing the homeless population or who would we reach out to for that? Is that a call that an answer that I should take? Yes. I, I mean, anyone that's interested, I mean, I think we're always looking for support from the private sector and we're always looking for support from, from non-governmental agencies. I think if there's anyone that would like to assist us with housing the homeless, hey, give me a call. Yeah. Um, and, and there is definitely an opportunity where welcome anyone that's interested in attacking that issue, and it's such a big issue. Um, hey, call us. We are we're here to listen, and anything that, you know, we're, we're open to suggestions. And I think it's important to say, to note too, that, you know, um, the 10 folks that we um, talked about housing this, the last uh, two weeks, um, that housing really happened because we had a private donor that, that stepped up and mm -hmm. said, what do you need in order to do first and security and gave us the money to do that. So here are folks that were living out in the, out in the park, living out in the street, had a little bit of social security money, had a little bit of income, but didn't have enough for that first and last. And this donor was able to come in and say, do what you need to do. Let's get them out of the park and into housing. And that's what we were able to do. So I think that's a bigger way of serving, but I think there's lots of different ways. Clarice knows too, volunteers, we're always looking for people to help. So if people have an interest, totally contact Jennifer, Clarice, the Lord's Place, and we'll put you to work. We'll, we'll find ways to help you fill your soul to help others, that's for sure. <clears throat> Thank you. This next question is, how can I get uh, contact with the Lord's Place if I'm afraid I will become homeless? Um, you just call the Lord's Place. The, the regular number is 4940125. You can go on our website and um, get that number call. As I said, we are right now working very closely in creating a program that um, if this is your first time experience, possibly experiencing homelessness, we're very sensitive to that. And so we will have, um, we will have an individual that is dedicated to just answering questions for what we would say or people that are maybe experiencing this uh, journey for the first time ever. So we call it the soft handoff. We wanna make certain that no one is ever embarrassed um, to pick up the phone and call us because we will be there to be responsive to them. Welcome back, Commissioner. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we know that this is live, so <laughs> I'm back. Sorry about that, sorry about We that. missed you. We're glad you're back. <laughs> glad to be, glad to be back. Uh, well, we have a very active audience. We have a few more questions. The next is Kimberly on Facebook who asks, when will county rental assistance programs be available? Um, specifically related to COVID, I know they're going for approval of the county board tomorrow to get approval of the funding that's being appropriated. Um, I do know that they have other rental assistance programs that are currently open and available now. So anyone who is interested in applying for the county's programs, they have rental assistance programs currently available. Um, so I, I, I would contact them directly at, at Human Services and that, that information will, will also be available at the end of this presentation. Thank you. Our next question was received on Zoom. Are there specific programs available to protect women who are homeless? Yes, that's my little heartbeat. Women, women's services for the homeless, yes. So um, women make up about 30% 30 of the um, homeless population and um, the Lord's Place is a very blessed and very privileged that we have three housing programs for single women. So if the woman is experiencing homelessness, have them pick up the phone and contact us. I will tell you we are full to capacity. Um, and we are hoping, so I'm doing a shout out to my friends at Lake Worth. We are hoping that we will be able to get uh, permission to start our fourth housing program down in Lake Worth, which will serve 24 women. Um, but being a woman out on the street is not, um, it's not something we, you don't want any woman to have to experience. So we're working very closely on trying to protect that population. They probably are the most vulnerable um, out on the street. So, um, but we're very committed to that population. The Lord's Place has always been and will continue to be. Thank you, Diana. Commissioner Nearing, 
uh, this message came in on Zoom as well. Can small okay. businesses apply for the rental eviction prevention program? Jennifer, you want to take that? Is he asking about the businesses? Small can small businesses apply for the rental eviction protection program? No, this specific program is just related to housing and to those who are renting housing units. However, the city does have a COVID-19 uh, small business loan program that is available through our Department of Economic Development. And that application is available online. And if you visit WPB.org forward slash, um, I'm sorry, no, just WPB.org, um, you should be able to um, um, receive that information. I know the county will also be rolling out a uh, small business grant program where you can receive a grant. I think it's up to $25,000 for small businesses. And it can help you cover the cost of, of your rental needs um, in, throughout the city or throughout the county. Thank you. Uh, this question came in through email. How can I sign up to take a shower? Are there any requirements for that? There are absolutely zero requirements. We just need you to come. We just need you to show up. There are no questions asked. It's very low barrier. So if you come, we will serve you. Thank you. Switching gears for a moment, uh, one viewer asked, when will beaches reopen? Yeah, I, I, I can take that one. Um, well, first of all, it's a county decision. Um, so it's not a, a city doesn't make that decision ultimately. Um, it is tentative, the beaches are tentative, tentatively set to open on uh, May 18th. However, there is a, a special county commission meeting tomorrow to make that very decision. So uh, pay, pay close attention to uh, the county commissioner, uh, county commission meeting tomorrow, and uh, they're going to be voting on that. Thank you. The next viewer wanted to know how they can apply for Section 8 housing. Yeah, um, this is this is always the question. Section 8 is really kind of the holy grail of, uh, of stable, affordable housing. And uh, unfortunately, although HUD has stepped up and uh, given us more money to keep the people in Section 8 in Section 8, because obviously the rent support or what we call the housing assistance payment it is almost doubled what it used to be because mm. of the lack of income of the folks who have a voucher. But we did not get a increase in the allocation of vouchers. That means we have more money to support the vouchers we have, but we don't have any more vouchers that we, we can hand out. So we have to close our waiting list and uh, I'm very hopeful that maybe some of the, the thought processes moving through Congress these days will uh, will see that we need more vouchers and we need to have vouchers for specific programs. Um, been lobbying uh, steadfastly for a VASH like voucher. There's vouchers specifically for homeless veterans, but I think we just need vouchers specifically for the homeless, you know. Sure. Let, let's get homeless vouchers Absolutely. out there on the street. The way to end homelessness is to give people a home. And, yeah. and the way to keep housing stable is not to people that are paycheck to paycheck immediately lose their, lose their housing. When you have a voucher, yes, you, can, you, you have a little bit more stability. So unfortunately, I don't have any to, uh, to distribute. That's not good news. But again, Talk to your elected officials, talk to your Congress people. They lose them with letters, with phone calls, with anything. Say, I'm homeless. If I had a voucher, this wouldn't be happening. So yeah. I would well, encourage I everybody to do that. And maybe I'll have better wanna, news. <laughs> and I also want to add, Laura, there was somebody that asked, how can the private sectors and businesses get involved? This is another way that, you know, if, if there was a way where the private sector and businesses could provide and help us provide more affordable housing. That's a great way. I think we rely on government. It's not the end all be all. Um, yes. You know, we have limited amount of resources. We have uh, many needs that we have to meet as a local government. And if, again, it, I think it's a social responsibility of all. So if there's businesses and private donors that want to attribute and provide uh, resources for affordable housing, hey, again, give us a call. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and let me jump in on that one, too, because we know how to do it. We know how to, if somebody mm -hmm. said, you know what, Laurel, here's a uh, million dollars, 
you could we could set up our own section eight program it doesn't right. have to just be a, I, I couldn't agree with you more jennifer and yep. it's a, it all it takes is money we've got the infrastructure in place we know how to right. do it we partnered with the city in the um, re-entry program with folks coming out of the um, incarceration and yeah. that was city money but we treat it just like a voucher it just gets yeah. the same kind of attention so that's all we need just the box Thank you. Several individuals have asked for uh, the numbers that were offered on this uh, program. Is it possible, Commissioner Nearing, to maybe do a round robin to give those numbers again so that viewers who may have tuned in late or didn't catch it could write it down? Sure, sure. Let, let's start with Diana with the Lord's Place. Could you, uh, any, any numbers that you have? Sure, sure. The number is 561-494. 0125 and that's 4940125 and just um they will connect you with the appropriate department uh clarice with uh, vita nova and the mobile showers can you uh provide the number yes you can reach us at 561 725 for more information on showers and other programs Great, and, and Jennifer, the city of West Palm Beach and uh, some of the programs that we talked about tonight. Thank you, Commissioner Neary, for giving me time to look up the 500 numbers. I, I saw you were doing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll start off for those who are um, looking to apply for the county's foreclosure prevention program. And this is um, through the Department of um, uh, Economic and House and Sustainability. And that number is 561-233. 3600. That's 561-233-3600. Um, those, those of you who are interested in the city's uh, um, uh, COVID-19 eviction prevention program, that's the rental eviction prevention program, the number is 561-822-1250. Again, 561-822-1250. Those who are interested in applying for the county's rental assistance program, and that program will likely come online in the forthcoming weeks, uh, specifically for those uh, related to, to COVID-19 experiencing loss of income due to COVID, that's 561-904-7900. Again, 561-904-7900. Those who are interested in um, applying uh, in receiving assistance from the city to apply for unemployment or food stamps, if you're looking for assistance to do that, you will call our offices, which please leave your name and your number, and we will call you back within 24 hours. Um, and that number is 822-1274. Again, 561-822-1274. And those who may need assistance um, with rental assistance for migrant workers, that is through the Esperanza Center, and that number is 561-560-3558. Again, 561-560-3558. And that's it. That's all I have for now. Great. And and I guess yeah. while we're giving out numbers, let me let me give you uh, my number. Uh, it is 561-822-1390, 561-822-1390. And, you know, my role is basically like a quarterback, you know, so if you need something and you're not able to find it, uh, please call me and I will do my very best uh, to make sure that we get you the information um, that you need. So thank you. Yeah, I, I'd like Laurel. to direct people yeah, to our website because we're trying to keep up our website with the links to the city's toolbox to, I know we've got some Lord's Place on there and our, our website is um, www.wpbha, like West Palm Beach Housing Authority, wpbha.org. And uh, we're trying to set up a uh, multi-layered portal so that it can get you where you need to go. Even if it's not our programs, we're trying to guide people because we get tremendous inquiries about housing. Thank you. 
Thank you. Our next question was received on email, and it's actually a two-part question regarding homeless, uh, or I'm sorry, youth who are at risk of being homeless. <clears throat> First part, are there specific programs or an agency possibly that could help them? The second part to that question is, are there any job placement or assistance programs as well? Awesome. So yes, Via Nova Inc., our goal is to move those youth who are disconnected. So youth who are experiencing homelessness, unemployment, disconnected from family supports or other you know, adults who are in their life to kind of help guide them, those who are disconnected from education. Our goal is to be that connection for them. So our agency actually adopts a housing first approach. So our first goal is to move them from homelessness to being housed. Um, one thing I can say I'm really proud of is we have a housing supervisor on our team who will literally scour the corners of the county to find housing for our youth. So that is our first goal there. The next after that is making sure that they have access to education and employment. We offer an on-site GED program um, for youth who are, have aged out of foster care. We have an independent living program. We have our own transitional housing and we also work alongside our partners at the Lewis Center to get our youth into programs like rapid rehousing or permanent supportive housing. And we focus on moving them forward in their education, whether that be a high school diploma, college, picking up a trade. We will do whatever we can to prepare them for that next step. Um, one thing I'm really proud of, one of our premier programs is our Ready to Work Workforce Development Program for you. So we offer those courses now online virtually three times per week. And our goal is to prepare them with those different skills that are going to be necessary for obtaining and maintaining employment. And we've also made that incentive base to help keep our youth motivated. Um, and then once they have obtained employment, we also have case managers that will stay along with them and sort of monitor how they're doing, um, check in to make sure they have everything they need. Um, another big push after they've received housing, employment, education is mental health. So making sure that they are feeling just mentally whole. We have a clinician on staff and she's getting to the root of some of those traumas because I'm sure Diana and the whole team can probably tell you homelessness is traumatic. Being homeless is traumatic in itself before we talk about things that may be happening to our youth on yes. the streets. So if you have any additional questions, see me after the town hall and I can fill you in on more about what Vita Nova does. Um, we're getting ready to roll out a financial literacy series for youth as well. And so main goals, housing, education, and employment. You have come to the right place. Thank you. Commissioner no Nearing, this is our final question. The application process for rental assistance can seem difficult. Do I need to provide all that information that is requested or is there any way to streamline it? That's a good question. Are you, can you, are you good, Jennifer? Are you mute? You can't come off mute? Do it. Oh, you're good. Okay, there, good, okay. Yeah. I, did, I couldn't unmute myself. Um, yeah, so I, I do understand the application is cumbersome. It asks for a lot of the information and details and ways where we need to verify your income. Unfortunately, uh, our resources and the funding sources that we use to process this application are federal and state funding resources, and they require a heavy burden of, of documentation. So uh, unfortunately, we have someone that we, you know, a funder, being the federal government and the state government that we have to uh, report to, and this is what they require of us as a condition to receive the funds. If it was up to us, trust me, it would be a lot of an easier, more streamlined process. But unfortunately, these are the standards and the guidelines that we're given. And, and, but again, we'll continue to work with you to help you through that. We understand that it is difficult to you know, get all this information and, and maybe you're not necessarily used to that, but we're here to help and we're, we're, we're gonna try to make this as, as, as easy as possible, considering the circumstances. 
Yeah, I think that's the theme and that's what this group has tried to do. It obviously hasn't been perfect, but we've tried to as best we can to come up with solutions that were very streamlined, that um, got the service to um, the community as quick as possible without a lot of the red tape that typically comes along with programs, but there's a ways to go. And so I can appreciate that question. And I know that we have some work to do. The other thing that I'll say is um, even with all of the services that you heard tonight, the reality is it's still not enough. Um, and, and this is why the, the public private partnerships are so important because no one organization, no one city um, can do it all. You know, it really takes the public private partnerships. It takes the community coming together, our faith-based organizations, I mean, you name it. And that's not to be cliche or trite, it's just the reality of it. No, mm -hmm. no one entity can take all of this work on. And so it's been, uh, it's been very nice um, working with you all to kind of work through it. Um, I also wanna thank the moderator for uh, helping facilitate uh, those questions and thank uh, the community for asking those questions, uh, very engaging. Uh, we're coming up on the hour and uh, before closing, there are a couple of updates that uh, I wanted to share. One is, and this has to be a priority, um, we have to make it a priority as a community as best we can. And I realize that there are folks that are, are suffering, so it may not seem that way, but our census, we really, really need folks to fill out the census because uh, we lose, I believe it's, it's $2,000 a resident over a 10 year period. So roughly $20,000 per resident um, for the city of West Palm Beach. And those, uh, you know, when we talk about programs, when we talk about services, those are the things that happen uh, with our uh, census. So we really encourage you to, to please fill that out. I, I believe you can do it um, uh, online, uh, by phone, oh. uh, a call, you can call. And we have until April, I'm sorry, August 31st, I believe is the deadline. Can someone verify that? I believe it's uh, October, October 31st, I believe okay. is the deadline. Um, on that it was extended. Um, so that's really, really important. Um, there are more town halls uh, on COVID-19 scheduled for this week. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, tomorrow, I believe at 1 p.m., Commissioner Schof uh, will be leading a town hall on uh, economic uh, support and recovery, which is obviously very important. And you can find the full schedule online at www.wpb.org slash COVID-19. Um, as you know, or some of you may know, West Palm Beach and Palm Beach County are a part of the governor's uh, phase one reopening. So restaurants and retail uh, can open back uh, up to 25% capacity. Uh, barbershops, cosmetology salons and shops can open back up with enhanced uh, safety measures. Please, please, please continue to wear your mask in public, follow the CDC guidelines, uh, six, six feet uh, distance, washing your hands and not congregating in, uh, in large groups. I mean, we, uh, we need to do this. We uh, please be smart, be safe and stay healthy. And together we will get through this. So thank you all. Thank you for your time. And thank have you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye everyone. Bye-bye.